Great Lakes Prepping here with another canning video. Today we're going to be making some sweet pickle relish. Sweet pickle relish, of course, is popular for hot dogs, but it's commonly also used in things like tuna salad, and potato salad, and things like that. Sweet relish is also one of the main ingredients in tartar sauce, so you can make your own. Mix it with some mayonnaise, you've got some amazing fresh tartar sauce. So there's a few steps to go through, none of which are particularly hard, so we'll jump right in. And as always, we'll get started by taking a look at our ingredients. So to make our sweet relish, we'll of course start off with some pickling cucumbers. And these are fresh from Mom's Garden, who's actually helping me out today with this recipe. And then we've got some onion. I'm using yellow onion today, but you could certainly use sweet onion or white onion. And then a couple of red bell peppers. Some people like to mix red and green bell peppers. I personally like the red. I think it works well, uh, color-wise anyway. Then we've got a whole bunch of sugar, some kosher salt, and then apple cider vinegar, white vinegar, mustard seed, and celery seed. Now, a quick note about the vinegar. If you look at a lot of recipes for sweet pickle relish, you'll see that most of them call for cider vinegar. Some of them call for white vinegar, but the vast majority that I've ever seen say to use something like apple cider vinegar. I personally think that when I use cider vinegar in pickle recipes or salsa recipes or really any type of vinegar on vegetable recipe, it comes out too fruity. Not necessarily too sweet, but just a fruity tone to it that I don't really enjoy. So in this recipe, I actually combine cider vinegar with white vinegar, half and half, and I think it'll balance it out uh, nicely and still have that sort of cider vinegar undertone to it. So the first thing we have to do is start cutting up our vegetables. We're going to chop up the cucumbers into little itty bitty pieces, and same with the onion and the red pepper. Now for our cucumbers, we're not gonna bother peeling them. All we're gonna do is cut a little bit of both ends off. And for the slightly bigger cucumbers, we are going to seed them. We don't need all of those seeds floating around in there. And all we'll do is take a spoon and just sort of scrape this membrane with the seeds right out of there. That's it. The smaller ones, I might not bother doing that, but some of these are just a little bit bigger and I think it's best to do it that way. And I'll also mention that you definitely can use a food processor for this step. It can get a little tedious cutting these up into a million pieces. I happen to like chopping vegetables, so I We'll just do it this way, but I will caution that if you are going to use your food processor, just pulse it a couple of times. If you do it any more than that, you're going to end up with cucumber mush, and you definitely want pieces. So we obviously didn't need all those cucumbers. What we need is to end up with four cups of the finely chopped cucumber. So that's what we have here. Then we have our two cups of finely chopped red bell pepper and our two cups of finely chopped onion. And I'm mixing all these together because the next step involves coating it all with salt. And that's where our quarter cup of kosher salt comes in. We're just gonna sprinkle this all over everything and give it a mix. And the reason that we do this is because that salt is going to draw a lot of moisture out of these vegetables. And we wanna dry these vegetables out a little bit before we turn them into relish. Because if we don't, they're gonna get mushy and the whole relish is gonna be far too liquidy. So from here, there's two ways you can do this. You can cover it all in cold water or you can cover it all with ice. I prefer to use ice. And as it melts, well, I guess it becomes cold water. So if you have a good ice maker, you can just cover the whole thing in ice. If not, just use cold water. And then we're gonna let it sit for about two hours. Okay, now we're gonna let this sit and we'll pick it up in two hours. All right, it's been a couple of hours. I pulled the excess ice off of here that hadn't melted yet and we're just gonna strain this all through the big colander. 
I'm going to give everything a quick rinse just to sort of wash off any of that excess salt that's still on there. Okay, and even though I drained it, we still want to get as much of that water out as possible. So we're going to use a fine mesh bag and really sort of strain out that liquid. And I'm not going to squeeze this to the point where it's mush, but I definitely want to give it a little bit of a squeeze to push some of that liquid out. All right, now we're going to start the brine here in the big stock pot. We got our cider vinegar, our white vinegar, that's one cup of each, three and a half cups of white sugar one tablespoon celery seed, one tablespoon mustard seed. This will start to stir together a bit better as that sugar heats up and dissolves. And what we wanna do is bring this just up to a boil and make sure that that sugar is completely dissolved into the vinegar. All right, since we're just about coming up to a, somewhere between a simmer and a boil, I'm gonna go ahead and add in all of those vegetables. Now we're just going to let this sit here and uh, simmer a bit and we want to bring it back up to a boil at which time we'll reduce the heat and simmer about 10 minutes then it's time to can. I'm going to start off by using a slotted spoon to start filling these jars and then I'll kind of eyeball how much brine I think I need to, to kind of top off these jars. A quick note about the ingredient measurements in this recipe. This recipe is based heavily on the ball canning, fresh preserving recipe for sweet pickle relish, and that includes the quantities. But what I need to mention is that if you use the quantities and measurements listed on the ball or fresh preserving website, it tells you that your yield will be four pints of relish. But what I need to tell you is that that is unquestionably inaccurate. With those measurements listed, which again are the same measurements and quantities that I've used in this recipe here, you should expect to get about one and a half pints. I honestly don't know where they came up with their estimate of four pints, but it's way off. There's no way that I could have done this recipe with these measurements any differently to result in that much more relish as a final product. I don't use a lot of relish, so I'm pretty happy with that amount for one batch. But if you're hoping to get four or more pints of relish out of your relish canning day, it's not going to happen if you follow this recipe or that ball recipe with the exact quantities and measurements. Anyway, moving on. So I've got it filled up, you know, most of the way with the relish, and now I'm just going to sort of top it off with some of the brine. And I'm looking to have a half, a hint, half inch of headspace. Of course, I'll use my little headspace measuring tool to make sure I'm right there. And yeah, it looks like I'm good. So now with the same tool, it's also a debubbling tool, I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of work this around the inside walls of the jar. Just trying to dislodge any, you know, rogue air bubbles that might be kind of trapped in there. Get those out of there so this thing cans properly. And then I'll take my wet paper towel and really thoroughly wipe the top rim of this jar, keeping in mind that the jar is very hot because it's filled with piping hot relish. I want to make sure to get any of that residue off of the rim of the jar so the lid will seal properly. And as always, all of my jars were sterilized in boiling water first. Now I'll put on the lids, followed by the metal rings. And of course, we just want to go finger tight, not overly snug. And that's it. Okay, we've got the canner filled with water on the stove, turned on high heat. And as I put these jars in there, I need to make sure that the level of the water is a good inch above the top level of the jars. So I may need to add a little bit more water in here uh, to make sure I've got that full inch. I'll put the lid on and let this come up to a full rolling boil, at which time the processing has begun. Now this recipe for both pints and half pints uh, requires 10 minutes of processing. So once it hits that full boil, I'll set my timer for 10 minutes 
and then the processing will be done. So we'll jump ahead and pick this up in a few minutes. All right, you can see we're at our full rolling boil, so now it's time to set the timer for 10 minutes. Okay, processing is done, and we're gonna go ahead and pull out our jars and let them sit here on this towel for quite some time, pretty much until they're completely down to room temperature. And over the next few minutes, I'll expect to hear uh, lids popping, which is, of course, the sound I like to hear because it means that the seal was successful, as was the canning. And as always, if you have any jars whose lids do not pop, it means that you have to assume that the seal did not work successfully on that jar. It doesn't mean you've wasted your food or your relish. It just means that it won't be considered shelf stable. Just go ahead and stick it in the fridge and use it in whatever amount of time you might use an open jar of relish that you bought from the store. I'm admittedly not the biggest relish fan in the world, but I will say that this sweet relish right here is among the best I've ever tasted. If I am in the mood for a little relish on a hot dog or hamburger, this is definitely the go-to for me. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all our future stuff, including more canning videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.